today our interest is on power analysis calculations uh, using R software and uh, I have a set of data that is called income that you'd like to review and in this data I have gender male and female and I have income in Kenya shillings uh, it's a uh, data that was locally collected for various incomes and so what I want to do today is I want to be able to estimate a sample size that I can be able to use if I go out to collect data and I want to have an effect size of a given effect size and also on a given power so what I'm doing here is I'm dividing the data into two, the male and also the female and then I'll be able to use the data so if I say in this case here I've filtered men and I've filtered women so now I can view the data uh, this is male only and the same case will apply for the women so now there are 8,007 entries for female and there are 11,582 entries for male. So having done that now I'll take the income and make it a numeric data and that will help me to do two things. One, I'll be able to estimate the coin D value for the log of the men and the log of the women i'll also be able to compute the standard deviation i have two libraries that i'm going to use the pwr and the lsr so if i do that i'm able to estimate the coin d value which we can view down here uh, the coin d value that we have which is 0.244 I can get the main standard deviation because I require that. That is 1.1166. I can do the same case for the women. I've done it there. It's 1.096. And I can also get the uh, standard deviation for the two together. Uh, put together. So now, what do I have? I know the coin D value, which lies between zero going up. 0 to 0 0.2 is small, 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 is medium, 0 0.5 and above is large. I can see ours is medium because we saw that the coin D was given by 0 0.244. So that helps us, helps me to use this data that was collected in Kenya to be able to estimate my sample size using the power analysis. Now, I have two methods I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at the t-test where the CD is given. D is equal to the CD. And uh, if we go back to our data, we see that uh, uh, we have computed the coin D. And uh, we can now be able to estimate. Now, you see it says it's not found because this is, should be our coin D. Uh, value and the significant is 5%. I'm using a power of 0 0.85, 0 0.8, that is 80%. And if I do that, I'll need 264 men and 264 women. 264 men and 264 women. It's not a small sample size, it is coming to around 528. Now, what would happen if I was to increase the power? Will the number be the same? Let's find out. If I increase the power, uh, my sample size will increase to 302 for men and 302 for women. And that will be able to that will enable me to find a significance in my study. So there's power as an influence. The coin D. Remember, our coin D was 0.244. Yeah. And the power, if I put the power as 80%, or to 11, it is 263 or 
before. Now, what would have happened if I took a value like a coin of 0 0.4? Yeah, let's put at 0 0.4. What happens to the sample size? Will it increase from 264? No, it has reduced. Because uh, there is a big difference between the male and female when the coin D is I. So for you to get a statistical significance, you don't need a big sample size. But since our coin D value is very small, 0 0.244, that's why we need a big sample size so that we are able to see a statistical significance. Now, we use the t-test when the population variance is unknown. What about when we know the population variance? Then we'll go ahead and use uh, the z-test the using a CBO uh, library uh, in that case. Remember, this is the standard deviation for both. So if we, are, we want, you can say both because I'm looking at the two. I'm looking at two groups. I'm looking at male and female. So if I was to retain the same, sorry, I need to change the CD to call it the coin D uh, value because that's the coin D, that's the, the effect size that I'm using. That's why it says could not be found. It's two tailed. I will need a sample size of 164 uh, uh, for each of the two groups. So what is happening is that the, the Z test is assuming that the variance is known. That is the standard deviation that we have used there. And if you increase the power, also the sample size will increase. So seen it's 164, but now when we come down, down here, you see it has increased because of increasing the power of analysis. So generally, that's how you'll go about for you to be able to estimate your sample size. You need to be able to get an effect size, meaning you have to look for historical data that is capturing something that you want to look at in future. You might not have the actual data of what happened, but you must have some context or some data that help you to estimate. And then now if I get the coin D and I can get the standard deviation, then I can be able to estimate the sample size that I want to use to for my study. So thank you so much for watching.